inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you, cause real women don't bitch, no, real women don't, 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 bitch. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me on the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. This is your proud host, August Crenshaw, a.k.a. Mrs. Raw, Real and Relentless. I am the number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs because building mental muscle is necessary in order to implement successful business strategies. This show has been created for the woman who is not excuse driven and needs help building a profitable business. I will be interviewing women from various fields who are willing to break the silence on struggles that specifically affect female entrepreneurs. Welcome to a show where I and guest speakers from time to time share our methods that help us beast our business no matter what is going on in our lives. Whether you are an online or brick and mortar business owner, this show is for you. We will hit every angle, personal, professional, and spiritual. Why? Because on any given day, you get hit with shit from a scenario involving one, more, or perhaps all of the above. It all impacts you and your mindset towards your business. I have made it my personal mission to provide a space where we dive deep into the BS we face on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> when the podcast episode starts off with laughter, you guys know that you are in trouble. Because <sighs> yeah. that means the pre-conversation, Mm-mm-mm, the pre-conversation. So this is a returning guest, you guys. And when you have somebody that you've already worked with, you've already built a rapport with, that relationship, the mindset is in alignment, you could just say, hey, what are we going to talk about? And be like, you know what? That's a good topic. You know, it doesn't really take that much work to say, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to create? What are we going to make? And so Miss Kiki Cornelius <laughs> and us were, and I were in the background having this impromptu conversation. We was like, that's it. That's what we're going to talk about, you know? And so I love this because the podcast is not planned. We may have a topic pre-planned sometimes, but this is real life, real conversation. So you really are listening to two women sitting at the table and you're going to get a lot of juice from this. So, hey, welcome back. Hey, August. Thanks for having me again. Oh my God. So I'm really on this, uh, this kick about women in relationships. You know, I love women entrepreneurs. I love building relationships with them. I think it's a wonderful thing. So I cannot wait <laughs> to get into what we said we were going to talk about today. But you know what? Um, I mean, come on, just, just, come, just let's go, go, go. Okay. You kick okay, it off. Let, let me tell the people a little bit about who I am. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm Kiki Cornelius. I'm a business coach and a digital nomad. I help women build businesses that they can run from anywhere. And I help women travel more with ease and have some fun and step away. Okay, so August and I were trying to figure out what we were going to talk about. And she taught, we were talking about relationships in, in, um, in relation to an event that she has going on right now. And the topic is, you know, we as women, we build relationships. Like as business owners, we'll go out and we seek other women to connect with, to build with, because we saw something in their vision, right? Something on their timeline, something in them called us to be with them. But then somehow it can get twisted. So we, we saw, we see this woman that we want to connect with and we know that, you know, we have a goal that we want to connect with other people through her, but we get, it gets diluted. So we forget that we actually have to build a relationship with this woman to even connect to the people that are behind her. And then mm-hmm. at the same time, we forget, we may forget that we also have to build up that woman too while we're building up our own selves. So as women in business and in relationships, we have to remember that it's all about you and it has nothing to do with you. Mm. 
A to the man. Let the church say amen. And then we, we hey, can we have a moment of silence, please? Right. Of, I don't I didn't even look, I lost my boy. Can we have a moment of silence? Yes. <laughs> I would like to also pour out a little bit of my water for the woman who <laughs> died. I hope that that old woman in you died and the new one has been reborn. But no, because that's because that's real talk. And, and you know me, I, I just like to, you know, put my claws into, you know, certain topics. The, the bottom line is, is the reason why that gets lost is because of selfish ambition. That's what it, that's what it really boils down to. And what a lot of women don't want to admit is that you have ulterior motives from the get go. It's like, okay, I'm going to this networking event. I'm going to see what this person has to offer because, you know, I got to be around like-minded people that I can connect with and I can collaborate so that I can build my business. So whether you like it or not, that's, you started wrong. You didn't start with purpose. You didn't start with intention. And what's the difference between that and a man saying, oh, I see you at the bar and I just want you to go jump in the bed. Or the psycho lady who's on a date that says, I just want you to know that I'm marriage material and I'm, I'm just really not here to date. I, I, I want to know if you're going to be ready to commit on Ooh, day that. one. That's, it's yeah. the equivalent of that. And that's what we're doing to one another in business. We have selfish ambition and we try to ride the wave of another woman's success, not realizing that what you're really doing is if, she, if she's not cautious, you will be depleting energy from that woman, which means that you will be part of what's overbearing, overwearing, overwearing, and, and whelming and tearing her down. Exactly. Exactly. So we have to start out with a better purpose and a better intention. Exactly. And I think, it, you know, you know, we talk about this too, August, is that um, we got some fucked up coaching going around out here. And, you know, one of the things that I know that I was taught, you know, you go and you join a summit and you can get or join an event and partner up JV partnerships. And then you get all these people on your list and everybody fine for everybody. And we got all of a sudden we got six figure people and we get stuck and we forget that we started this initially because we wanted to help people. Ouch. But you know what? I don't I'm honestly, Kiki, because of the way that things are taught from some of the fucked up coaches, mm-hmm. I honestly don't believe that individuals know that they can actually still help and build their business. There's this, there's this, there's this fallacy that you know you're either helping or building a business. And I know for me personally that I'm the perfect marriage between doing mission-driven, purpose-driven work. Exactly. While simultaneously helping other women. You just have to learn how to have that edge and put that secret sauce of knowing when to actually implement the business structure. But at the forefront of it all is help. Because if you don't give me a little something, something we call right. them freebies and whatever, right. to know that you can help me in the first place, we never get into the money or any of those things. So the other thing you're guilty of is you're trying to rush the process of success and you're not trusting it. Yeah. Oh, ooh, exactly. Because we're in a microwave type generation where, you know, six figures in six months, six figures in six weeks, um, a big bliss overnight. It just, it just gets so overwhelming that I think when what we need to do as individuals and in business is always to come back to the core and the value and why you began this process in the first place. And if the actions that you are not taking are not aligned with that why and who, then, hey, some changes need to be made. You know, you, you made me think about something because I actually had an incident with an individual that was going to be a speaker at mm-hmm. my summit. And so one of the reasons why we deal so negatively, adversely, or we don't deal with situations at all in business is because we don't have that core purpose. And when you have core purpose and you know what you're doing, you know why you're doing, you know what your key values are, then you're not rushing out for those JV partnerships. You're not trying to be like, well, what can I do just to get some people? Because if I can get 15,000 people on my list tomorrow, I'm financially free. When you haven't done those things, then, then your bullshit meter is off. 
and you right. can't detect when when something doesn't sound right. And I promise you, this woman probably still listens to my podcast because she was an avid fan. But I remember at one point because there was a conflict with something in her schedule and participated in this special element of my summit that when she reached out to me and she's like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. But can I still be a speaker? Now, here it is. I mean, Christian woman always talking about God and what we can do. And, you know, we're changing the world. And she's always telling me, you're doing God's work, August. When she told me that, I was like, hmm, I could make an exception. I could still let her be a speaker. She wouldn't be able to get affiliate commission because of my policy. I said, you know what? You could still be a speaker. And out of nowhere, she sent a message that said, besides exposure, what am I going to get from being in your summit? I need to build my list. Wow. See, and that has nothing to do with you. But it, but, but, but the thing about it is, is how many times have women heard or seen messages like that and yeah. they were taken aback and they think to themselves, oh, no, she didn't, but you don't say anything or you don't know how to respond or because you already told them that they could participate. You don't have the balls. Now I got to put your masculine <laughs> side out to say, wait a minute, hold up, baby. Right. And, 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 and I honestly had to go there with this individual. And, I, and I'm telling you something. So I'm, I'm going to pass this back after I give this juice. You don't have to be a bitch to be direct. But if you're right. going to be a boss, you better start learning how to be direct so that you're not entangled in the raw relationships. And I explained to her very clearly, sweetie, when you came into this relationship, you said that you had been in multiple summits. So you already know that the name of the game is two things, exposure and list building. Those two questions were a no brainer. So what you did is you revealed to me what your focus was, but my presentation from the beginning showed the mission driven cause and how the residual impact was list building and financial. The way I do what I do, it's a guarantee that not only were you going to get people on your list, but because of the way I do what I do, baby, you probably was going to skip the list and get right to the client. My people in my summits will tell you the way that I orchestrate them and the stuff that I do, I take out a lot of the middle wonkiness and get a person from being not a cold prospect, not a warm prospect, but a hot one. And so since I know my purpose and I know my value, I was just very polite and said, you know, based on the way that you've spoken, it's very obvious that our core values do not align. I take that back, baby. I apologize, but you cannot be a part of this. And so my anxiousness and my, and mind you, she is a multiple six-figure earner. And mind you, she has influence. If I were to succumb and say, my influence isn't as big as her, so maybe right. I should still keep her because at least she'll still promote, I probably would, it, it, not even probably, I won't say that she wouldn't have promoted at all, but a lot of times you have heavy baggage. You have people that will be in your collaborations when this yep. is where we kicked off this conversation that yep. don't show that equals to love and support and don't promote. They're just like, well, look at me. I participated in this. I got a chance to be in that. And they're not showing that extra love. But so you right. got to have purpose. That yep. way, once you do align with people, it's a robust experience. It's a no brainer. And I think you said something. Okay, so you said two things. I literally had to take a note, hon. I had to take a note. Like, I got to make sure I get back to it. So you talked about the values being aligned. And I know this is how we started it. And I think sometimes, I think we need to educate our listeners on what is your value. Like, when we talk, about, when we kick it out, we kick it out there and we say it because we know what our values are. I know that my core value is freedom. If it's going to stop me from having freedom, I ain't touching it. Now, with a 10-foot pole, now, with a 10-foot pole, then freedom to me is just as simple as I can't watch the view at 10 o'clock or at 11 o'clock, depending on the time zone that I'm in. That's my that's how low my level of freedom goes, if that's what you want to call low. I got to watch the view. But anyway, we talk about values. <clears throat> and values are really what we use, whether you're aware of them or not, right? We use them to decide on things, to make yes. decisions who we're connected with, who we deal with, how we spend our money. So if you're not, when you're not connected to your value, your core value, you'll fall for anything. And you will catch up with that person who will come into your circle and they'll, they're will they like a wolf and she's cold clothing, but you won't recognize it because you're not even, you don't even recognize yourself. Yep. Right? So we have to start there. So a core value for anyone who's listening and hasn't, 
have this education in your life, look up your values because your values are going to tell you who you are. Your values, are they are, mm -hmm. you know, I always give this example between me and my sister. It's a perfect example. I'm, I, you heard me, mine was freedom. Hers is security. So freedom for me means I don't want no car note. I don't want no house note. I don't even want an apartment lease. I'm a digital nomad. I live wherever in what city I think I'm going to live and I'll find a place when I get there. Now that drives my sister who, who values security down like crazy because her security says she needs to have a car to get around. She has to have an apartment lease. She needs to know where she's going to be if she, when she gets to the next city. I only need to know the first three days when I come to a new city. I'll figure out the rest once I get there. I ain't lying. I know you're not. I watch you. You do it all day. Right. Right. So I, but I'm that in tune with myself. And the only reason I know the first three days is because my husband travels with me and that's a requirement of his travel. Okay. That's my, so that's my give, right? In that relationship. Mm -hmm. So when we think about that, when you're connecting with people and their values, you need to know that the person that you're connected with agrees with the same type of things that you agree with in life. Like mm -hmm. a Christian doesn't want to be connected with an atheist. No. Right? A black person who doesn't want to be connected with a with a white supremacist. It just doesn't make sense. But see, nope. these are the values that I'm saying that you can see and like you can just see it. These are things yes. that people you can't see my value of freedom unless you watch me, right? But you don't know it's like that's my value. Man. So what do you value in your life? And when you figure out what you value in your life, then the people around you will magnify what you value. <sighs> Baby, okay, I know you said you had two points. Can I just, you know how I am. And, and I'm telling you, the people that listen to the podcast, I'm, you, you can almost build your business off the podcast because, <laughs> because the way we come in here giving you the real, I'm, I'm serious. For instance, so a lot of times, what about when you decide to take the ST plunge, whether that's starting a podcast or doing a summit or something like that? then you need other people to team up with you. So you're the person that's soliciting for individuals to come. Well, the, the problem is because people are opportunistic, when they come mm -hmm. to you, you also have to check your ego. If your ego is not in the right place, you might be like, well, look at all these people that apply because everybody that apply didn't make the cut. And it wasn't always because they did something wrong or that offended me is because the values weren't there. And I remember one pastor, she, um, she signed up to be a speaker, you know, and I'm a little, I'm a little raw y'all. So I mean, right? I, I, I know the word and I do believe in all the promises that God made, but I, you know, pastors, I had <laughs> pastors. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I'm sitting in this interview, I'm talking with this lady and she like, yeah, I read over all because I sent this really nice PDF that gives a very thorough breakdown of everything. And she's like, yeah, I really want to be a part of it. I'm like, how do you feel about this? And so we're having this great synergy. And so one of the things that women do why they lose their values is because they get lost to the emotional hype. And when you're in business, you got to be emotional, but you have to be aware and you need to know when those emotions are ruling your decisions versus they're just fueling that moment. And so as hype as everything was and as good as everything felt, then I had to go ahead and ask the challenging question, ask the hard question. I was like, you know what? This is really great. You know, I don't know how long you've been following me or what you perceive about me, uh, but are you sure you want to be in this summit? Because are you going to be able to support it? See, I value support for my right. functions. And are you going to be able to support and promote this event, knowing that while you have a Christian perspective, one of my speakers teaches Reiki? And, you know, and then she was like, well, you know, they're doing what they're doing and you're doing what you're doing, you know, so I can still, you know, but I said, no, 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 no. I said, I, I see, I don't hear that same fire that we had in the conversation before. I said, let me make it real, real clear. I said, do you realize that when you're promoting this summit and you're tagged by my other speakers and there's a lot of stuff going down that some of your friends might send me friend requests? And how are your Christian followers going to feel when they see my podcast, Real Women Don't Bitch, pop up? 
because I need, because, because, because my core, my, my core value is authenticity. And yes, within that, and it's, and it's my special spelling with the A-W-E and my, and my values are, it's an acronym. We ain't going to go through all of that, but within that, I don't care what you do with your business. I'm not the judge. I'm not the jury. And if you serving and you changing lives and you making people a better person, then I don't care. But I couldn't get lost up in the smoke. Me knowing what my values are also puts me in a position to understand that I need to gauge relationships, ask questions, not be emotionally driven so I don't make the wrong connections in the first place. Then I'm in this, this, this relationship that's just so full of turmoil. Okay, so now I got to come into that one. Now I'll get back to the other one because I got to know. But see, what you you, I know you know what you did, but we have to let everyone else realize what you did is that you allowed her to see exactly who she was connecting, opening her community to. Because that's another thing that we don't think about is that we are, when we open up our lives as entrepreneurs and we start doing things and we bring other people in, those other people affect our community and they influence our community. Yes. So uh, yet another reason to want to make sure that your core values line up because you don't, know, it's like, I'm not going to give no other examples because I can go back. I can go work, mm -hmm. you know, you just don't do it. Don't, you don't. don't in all your relationships, two things, alignment and understanding. Mm. Oh, three, communication is always key. Right. Okay, so that other thing is that you were talking about um, her asking about the amount of people that she needed to bring onto her list and not being um, supportive. And I thought the thing that came to mind is that she couldn't see the forest for the trees. Ooh. Ouch, come on now. Bring it. Because we get so blindsided by one, one strategy, one tool, one tactic. And you know what? That might not even be the tool and tactic and strategy that you need to be implementing to get your business off the ground. However, you have connected with someone who could actually help you and be able to see that, but you can't see that because all you're thinking about is you got to, you got to, you, you want to pimp this strategy so that you can build your list. Yeah. And then you'll wonder at the end of the summit, why it didn't work out exactly the way you had planned. Well, it's because you weren't aligned. Nope. And you went into relationship as a pimp instead of someone who wanted to serve and someone who wanted to relate and someone who wanted to build a build an authentic community. Not just, you know, this is the, okay. okay. Oh boy, she this, getting hot y'all. Come on, bring the it. The problem with numbers, especially vanity numbers, is that they're, they're bullshit. They ain't real. I mean, I can tell you, I got 12,000 people on my followers on my Facebook business page, so? Them people ain't buying from me. You want to know the people that buy from me, the people that I build relationships with and talk to. Yes. And I know that. So when you're thinking about building a big list, it's like, okay, then what are you going to do with that list when you build it on the other side of this relationship that you built so that you can get all these, all these, and then you, people end up on your list and then you're not giving them nothing, no value. No, you're not even asking for the money. You ain't serving. You just got a big list. It, got, it has to be more than that. It has to be more than that. Man. That's why I said it's, it's about you, and it has nothing to do with you. Because we come back to why, why did you start this? Who do you want to serve? And mm -hmm. that, above all else, once we serve, what did, I know you probably know it better than me. There is a um, quote by Zig Ziglar, Zig, Zig Ziglar that says, um, if you want to get what to get what you want, you have to give another enough other people what they need. So you have to give what I mean. We can't ask for money when we're not giving value and helping people. When the only thing we can do is think about how we can benefit from the people in our community. Well, it's a it's a it's in any relationship, it's win win. How do we yeah. both build? How do we both grow? How do we both increase our finances? And then have a conversation. Talk about it. So that conversation would have been with me 
on the other side of that with me and you, had that been me and you, it would have been something like, okay, August, what can we do after this summit to help people grow their business even more? Yes. You know, because for me, it's always the next step. Like, okay, yeah, we have this summit, right? We're mm-hmm. gonna do this. You already have the vision for that. Now, I need a vision for what's next. I don't, I don't need to do nothing but follow your vision at this point mm-hmm. because I've attached myself to what is your vision. I'm not coming in to change your vision. And that's the problem with a lot of people too. They want to come in and you know, you not only want to pimp my vision, you want to change it. I didn't ask you to pimp my ride. But how you gonna come in and I I man, please can I it's so much. It's and I didn't take notes. I was sitting here for two seconds just look it. But how do you come in and try to change another sister's vision when you weren't there to build it up? That's like somebody coming to me and being like, you know, August, with what you're doing, you know, I really think you need to get away from this, you need to do it this way. And it's like, okay, so this is my third time around. Uh, three times is a charm. Why don't you ask me more questions first? Maybe there is something else you have to offer that I can implement or I could do. But what people do, I, I got to use church, for example. I, you know, I remember when I was younger, I went to this church and they didn't have a children's ministry. Didn't nobody want to deal with the babies. But I was like, I do it. Baby, we started doing praise dancing. We put on programs. I was there every Sunday for Sunday school. And the kids wanted to come to church. Then out of nowhere, the pastor's niece decides that she wants to be the head of it. Now, because of hierarchical crap, you know, I got booted, you you know, and she got in and then she started changing things and rearranging them, but you weren't there to build the foundation. So needless to say that that thing lasted for a while because of the foundation that was preset, but because it couldn't be preserved, because y'all do know the structures have to be preserved, that it ended up it ended up falling down. And so there's so many moving parts and there's so many things that work. And if, especially, especially if you don't have something to give, see, it's a difference between, between coming to rearrange something versus yeah. seeing a gap and saying, and that goes back to the re- relationship and yeah. giving and serving and saying, sis, this is a beautiful thing you got going on. But I noticed this one gap. Now, your situation may be different, but from my experience, this may be something that you want to implement and you're giving it from a point of helping. Because I'm going to tell you guys, behind the scenes of major events, y'all ain't going to believe this. (laughs) It's a lot of work. (laughs) You know, it's a lot of work. And so imagine, I thank you. So for, for, for that one event, I have 20 people that I'm responding to. So guess what? While I'm doing all that I'm doing to, to build this, this the event out, guess what's happening to the people? Now, let, let, I'm, this, I'm, I'm, let me break this down. I'm passing it back. When you decide to do something great, because positive and negative forces do exist, there is always going to be some type of opposition. But resistance for a person with a strong mindset understands that resistance makes you stronger, but it still doesn't feel good nonetheless, whether it's a barbell or whether it's a smack in the face from life. While this is going on, because it is purpose and mission driven, you know it's some attacks, right? No, you know, without even going down a slippery slope, after I got the ball rolling, my grandmother passed. I couldn't, I couldn't stop doing what I was doing. I got all of these other women that are involved in something with me that they're on fire for. They were there. They were my rock. They prayed with me. They supported me. I mean, one person reached out to me and I hadn't even told the group yet because I didn't want them to get distracted or discouraged. She out of nowhere intuitively felt my spirit. That's just how tight the connection was. But as time progressed and I'm feeling good and I'm feeling better, out of nowhere, where one of my speakers reaches out and says, hey, you know, you said something the other day and, and, and it hit me hard because this is actually an area that I'm struggling with because you could be a false and have a struggle. Um, you didn't right. know that one either. So what does that mean? I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm a mindset coach. And so if you want me to, you know, respond to that or something, you know, you can always, you know, become one of my clients. You know, at this point, she's a partner. And so it was like, hey, you know, let's get on the phone. Let's talk. Let's, because, see, I've got to support her and build her up because this is about our relationship. This is about our sisterhood. And so you guys got to really ask yourself, how, how committed am I to it? 
Because when it starts looking crazy and wonky and things start going bad, and you're going to be the sister being like, mm-hmm, and see, and there she go with a typo. And, mm-hmm, the landing page had a glitch. And, uh-huh, everybody keep coming. Or are you going to be the person to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Because, see, when it's on you, you're going to be like, oh, technology happens. I really hope you guys forgive me. You're going to feel embarrassed. You're going to feel some kind of way. You have to eradicate the mindset of judgment and be there to love and to help another sister out. And so the way that me and my speakers are bonded with one another, it's not one of those where what can we get out of it type of deals. That's what you're looking for, ladies. If if you're going to collaborate, you need relationships. About collaborate, relationate. How about the guy to make up? Oh, collaborate, relationate. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I like I like that because what the what what I think the general theme is that I would love for the women and the men, right, who support us or who partner with us to get from this podcast is that relationships matter. And at the end of the day, the relationships you built on your way to success will be the relationships that will hold you up in success. Because you go burning bridges all the way over and thinking you ain't going to need to come back across and then you got to eat crow. None of that is good when all you could have done was maintained a relationship. And it does, it's not like we're saying you got to be calling everybody all the time. Look, you calling everybody all the time. All of a sudden our relationship is over because you're too needy. I ain't got time for that. Right? But you have to be able to know who you're getting in relations with. I believe that business relationships are just as important as the relationships we have in our personal lives with our spouses, our family members, and that that thing spills over. So if you're treating people in a business community bad relationship-wise, my assumption is that that is what you do everywhere. Because look, I hated this term when I first heard it because it, it was hitting on me. It cut me deep. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> so, I, and, I, and I know some people that don't want to believe that, but I tell them all the time, it may take a little bit more time to manifest because there are certain, you know, consequences if you let it out. Oh, but over time, oh, you go let it out. Yeah, it's going to spill out. You ain't going to be able you ain't going to be able to help it because it's you. So it's, it's you. better to just be you. Yeah, you can control free. Yeah, if you're a control freak, you're going to be a control in your personal life and in your business. If you're a procrastinator, I'm not, you know, (laughs) I love my daughter to death. I'm not trying to put her on blast, but my daughter, I used to tell her, Ty, you lazy because she ain't never want to clean up. I'm like, you just, you just like, I'm not lazy because she sang opera. And so she's like, all day, all night, singing, 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 and practicing and, and prep, prep, prepping for the concerts and all of this stuff. And I was like, so you think you're not lazy because you're going to use the one area in your life that you're driving as justification for not being lazy? I said, we'll see what happens when you no longer do it for joy, but you have to do it for work. And 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 not to be a diss, because she was finding yeah. herself, but when she went to college and she saw that getting a music degree was just as difficult as getting a medical degree, yes, <laughs> she switched gears because she didn't want to do all that work. Now, my baby isn't lazy, but you, y'all mm-hmm. get the general... I get it. But, 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 but that's a prime example, and I was telling her then. And so what's wrong, a lot of people don't like that statement, but the reality of it is, is that when the right circumstances hit, it's going to show up. A lot of times the mask of different uh, benefits stops right. it from rising, but let some shit change up and don't you, and watch yourself change up. Right. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, I ain't got 500. Like I said, I had I only got 250. All of a sudden, it's a whole other person coming out because, you know, it's just mm-hmm. bad. And when you build relationships on bad, bad foundations, they, they just fall. I mean, they just weak. They fall. You can't expect that business relationships are going to be any different than any other relationship that you mm. have in your life. I don't understand it. This, this, I think business relationships are probably more difficult because there's the exchange of so many things that have to do with money and yes. value, right? Yes. And not even just monetary value. You know, all of a sudden you, you, um, you mess up my value in my community because you're doing some crazy stuff and because I'm connected to you, then all of a sudden we got problems, you know, so things yes. can change. So that's why you don't want to, you want to make sure that you're connected and you're attaching yourself to the right visions 
and the right goals that align with you and what you want to do. At the same time, they just align with your life purpose. Yes. It just mm. doesn't, like, it doesn't get any better than this. Like, if you did this thing all day, like, if this summit was the end-all, be-all to your next 10,000 people, like, you give it your all. You don't give it half and think that you're going to get the whole damn meal. No, you didn't, you, you didn't cut, you didn't cut the steak. We don't have steak with this meal. You forgot it. <laughs> Told you you needed it, but you thought you wanted a shortcut. No, we don't. So... <laughs> She is, she is a coach. She is a thug coach, y'all. Because <laughs> I'm all, at the end of the day, August, it all comes down to action. Yes, it does. What are you doing? Yes. What are you doing to make the relationships in better? And oh, I can't believe we didn't talk about this. We're talking about relationships. When we talk about the people who don't support us. Mm. But then, I, who are you supporting? Yes. Whose stuff are you sharing? Who have you told that is going to be the greatest? I used to have this coach, August. This is probably why I feel so passionate about this one part of it in the support thing. I had this coach. She was bad. Let me tell you, she was like um, a million-dollar coach. I, I learned a lot of things from her, good and bad. So the bad part was she stood on stage and talked about all the coaches and mentors she'd been she didn't coach with, and she paid them this much money and this much money, and they helped her do this, and they helped her do that. She even went so far to tell us about a book that she had read that had netted her $10,000 with an idea from the book within 15 minutes. We never knew who those people were that built this, helped build this woman up. And mm -hmm. then something so simple as the title of a freaking book. Are you kidding me? You ain't going to give us that either. Dag, man. You know what? And I, and I, I feel you. And I'm going to flip it in the reverse. Yeah. Not always, because sometimes my clients are not online, and sometimes some of them want a little bit more privacy than others. But Got you it. can, all, but you, but you can almost always tell who my clients are, exactly. because because I promote them. Why, if I'm not promoting them as of yet, it's because they're not in position to receive whatever's coming on the other end of that. You know right. what I'm saying? And until right. they're in position, because like one of one former client every time she put up something about some baked goods if i was like girl they was the best somebody that i knew was like well do you ship here and it doesn't make right. a difference whether it was one person five people or ten people when you know that people look at you and respect you and if you say that something is good that that's going to be a game changer for somebody saying yes i'm going to buy that's into that because word of mouth is always the best for me as a effect. Yeah, hell, hi, girl. Oh, you did you do Oprah to me last time, girl? I love you, Kiki. Okay, I hope some of y'all get to watch this video. We over here cutting up facial expressions and all. <laughs> but real talk, I promote my clients. I let it be known. Now I don't go out there and say this is my client and this is why they're the bomb. I'm like, such and such and such is the best coach for you if you want to do this. And yeah. not only yeah. that, so let me go ahead and put this other little nugget in there. Those upper echelon earners, they spend with each other. They right. circulate the money. So guess yeah. what? When I needed Reiki training, if I tr I'm, I'm coaching you, I trust you, I'm going to get Reiki training from That's you. Amazing. It's when exactly. I when I want to learn to speak of the Espanol, I don't go and buy Rosetta Stone. I'm paying you. When I need some t-shirts made, I'm paying you. When I need my website done, I'm paying you. If there is anything that I have ever needed, if I have a client that provide, even look, one of my former clients, I don't live around her anymore. She does brows. I'm not even really a makeup person, but some of the things I've been doing has been kind of sort of requiring me to maybe be a little <laughs> bit more polished, you know, now, you know, but and it's okay. Cause I'm not saying I like it at all, but guess what? If y'all been looking at my brows lately and been like, they really look kind of, but I bought her brow kit. I could go right around the corner to one of these little stores, and make, but they spend with each other. So not only do I let it be known who my clients are on the background, I spend with them because yes. it's got to be about reciprocation. Woo. 
reciprocation so who are you supporting and yes you need to put it out there you need to be let you need to let it be known who is doing what for you and if it's a resource give it give, give it. it right no see i love that because you know i understand the need to not be you know um announcing everything because everything about you everybody don't need to know right but I don't understand the need to hide it just to keep it private. Like maybe you don't want us to know that you're getting that type of help or, you know, why, why, why can't I have August? Like, or is it that you don't want me to have August because she did so well for you? You don't want me to do so well. I mean, like I, I'm, I be questioning the motives and why you ain't, tell, why you ain't giving me the resources? You know, I need them. I thought we was helping build each other up, sis. What's up with that? Yeah. So it's like, we got to be able, we have to know, like we all know, we know stuff. Sometimes like we know stuff that we don't even know. And it's not for us to keep it. It's like, give it away. Yes. Because the more we give, the more we make room for other things to come back to us. <sighs> the ba ba basic, basic, basic law of attraction, put it out there and then expect it to come back. And, and the other thing I want to just add on top of that is when you put it out there, once again, check your motives. Okay. I, I, it, it, me, me, me going out there and saying, okay, so I put Kiki on my podcast. Now, if Kiki come up with a podcast, oh, she better let me be a guest. I'm not, I'm not going to be thinking that there's not going to be, there's not going to be an entitled entitlement mentality because what if your podcast is all about being a digital nomad? I'm not a digital nomad. Now, I am up and moved and did some things like you, and I do have aspirations. I got to get my children just a little bit older because they can't handle it to basically more live an RV lifestyle. But still, but what if that's the whole purpose? And, and, and once again, it's about alignment. But I see a lot of women sometimes that think that just because I did this for you, that you should do this for me. Or, you know, if I donated to your cause, you got to donate to mine. I opened up this door for you. You don't know. A lot of times, you, that's why it's called paying it forward. So you can't look behind and see what you did for somebody else. Let me say it again. It's called paying it forward. So once again, just to really make sure you all are seeing this. I remember a young, I've always had a car. Even when I was young, I always had a car. And I remember one of my best friends, she didn't have a vehicle. And I would just drive her around wherever she had to go, support her to work, grocery store, all this stuff. She was like, girl, I can't wait till I get some wheels on me so I can pay you back. I said, well, how are you going to pay wheels back with wheels? No, <laughs> No, no, what you need to be tripping off of is paying somebody else back. She can't do for me exactly what I did for her. I and I, I didn't that. do what I did for her for her to pay me back. I did it because I loved her and I saw she had a need. And so sometimes you just need to show up and let somebody else shine. And then yeah. you're going to find out that you got your cheerleaders and everybody else is going to put the spotlight on you and they going to help you shine so what's your motives what's what's your motives for real for real ladies talking about you want to have these partnerships slash joint ventures slash affiliates slash collaboration slash try to build my business the fastest most ineffective un in in a non-moral fashion unethical way possible <laughs> nerve hit you heard it we just saying I don't know what else to say, August. I don't even think we need to say anything else. I think that honestly, for real, for real, that the women that have heard this, their soul has either been pricked or they've been edified and said, okay, let me realize that what I'm doing, I can keep doing it because it's going to pay out. And not in the long run, ladies, it's going to pay out in due season. Start raising yeah. your expectation. What I want you to do is I want you to let the ladies know what you got going on. <laughs> what I got going on. Okay, so what I have going on now is a cruise to Cuba come Ooh. November. We're doing a vision board Ooh. cruise to Cuba. I love vision boards. I think they give life. I actually think they walk on water. That's just yeah, I'll let you watch it on YouTube. Look behind her. Yeah. Any clue? It's just like, so I'm doing a vision board cruise to, cruise to Cuba in November. If anyone wants to check it out, you're interested in vision boards, you're in interested in connecting and communing with powerful women, women in business, you like to be on a cruise, you want to go see Cuba because, you know, they just open this place back up to us. We got to go see what's going on, right? That's a traveler in me. I'm sorry, y'all. I just love travel. Join me. 
check it out. KikiCornelius.com slash Cuba2019. Mm-hmm. But she gonna oh, get back. Hey, if they ain't following me on Facebook, come on, y'all. What's up with that? I was just getting ready to say the links are on the site, y'all. So they also connect with her. Facebook is her jam. That's where she's at. She absolutely loves it. That's where you find her. Connect with her. The woman is crazy just like me. Her energy is always just like this. It's, you know, it, 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 crazy, it, cool. it is, is what you get. Now, only because, only because of the timing of this, because I usually don't add anything else after I have a guest. Ladies, if you aren't in a position where you can take the cruise to Cuba, because you're still trying to get it together, if you want to see what real sisterhood looks like, if you want to be loved on by 21 women talking to you about everything you're going to deal with in your business, from the up and down and turmoil with your kids and your husband, for anything dealing with uh, email marketing, signature courses, learning how to sell, narrowing down your niche, personal finance, everything you deal with as an entrepreneur. When I tell you, you ain't been to a, you ain't been to a physical live conference that's going to give you more value than we're going to give you, then I want you to make sure that you, you're after you do what you do, you're on the site already. Make sure you check out the Business Mastery 2.0 Summit. Follow, you guys should already be following me. If you ain't following me, I don't know what's wrong with you. But, but sign up because it's free. It's free for a limited time. I'm a business Amazing. owner. But ladies, we would love to have you there. We want you to see what love and authenticity looks like. So Kiki, um, there's some people that you just don't bat an eye when they say they want to, you know, do something with you. When you ever use, if you just be like, you know what, August, I got something going on and I want to get the word out there and I want to promote and I would like to use the podcast as a venue. You can ask me, you know what I'm saying, to be on the podcast because you know when somebody's going to come. And they're gonna give, and they're gonna give value. And I'm gonna have to check my stats too and see how we doing in Cuba, because we are. I'm proud to say, downloaded in 66 countries. Now a couple of them countries has only got like a couple downloads, but nevertheless, okay. we didn't. We hitting the globe. Right. And right now, like the top ten is like Australia, Germany, UK, Canada, United wow. States, of course, at the top. You guys, people are listening to this podcast. It is steadily growing. And I've added this in there before. Y'all just don't know. I would probably have more. I don't, it's not even a probably. I would have more listeners, but you want to know what I can't do? I can't drive traffic. I can't like run ads to my podcast because of the policies with Facebook because of the word bitch. Even oh. if you bleep out the words, you can't, you can't create ads that lead to pages that have profanity. So when I give you guys stats about the podcast, this is all organic. It is all organic. And so for those of you all that's wondering what do you got to spend money? Can you look like Kiki said earlier, there's not just one way. There are multiple methods. When you are passion driven, baby, it, you will be blessed. It, it, it will be blessed. So you guys keep tuning in. Kiki, you keep on doing what you're doing. I love you to death. Thank you for the value. Thank you for the conversation. You got me on fire. Um, I think I'm going off of here and going live on my Facebook page. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come watch. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you later. I love you, darling. Love you. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Remember to cultivate a mindset that is biased towards taking action. No bitching, whining, or complaining. Here, our mantra is: Real women don't bitch. We get shit done. See you next week as I continue to bring you what you need to keep your head in the game and beast your business. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Would you like a specific topic covered? Have a question you would like answered live? Then head on over to realwomendon'tbitchpodcast.com. Subscribe to my email list. Hit me up and I got you. Interested in being a guest speaker? You walk the walk? Then you can sign up on the website too. This is your number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs, Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless, signing out. Deuces! Inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you.